Hey everyone, it's Bailey Wiki with a quick preamble. Today we're going to talk to two very popular creators in the VTT space, Michael Gelfi and David Schulman from Describe. And towards the back half of the session, we'll talk about their major new collaboration. It's an audio tool called Opus, which I find very interesting. So if you'd like to jump straight to it, just use the timestamps. And if you want to try out Opus alongside me, you can get a free 30 day trial if you just use the code BaileyWiki when you check out. So just check the video description for details. And with that, let's jump into the interview. Hey everybody, it's Bailey Wiki. I know you get to see my face for the first time in a long time today, but I've got two really interesting creators that I've asked to join us today. You guys know I like to do some interviews with creators and I've done some with a bunch of the module, uh, Foundry module developers and some others, uh, some artists and things like that over time, like Tom Cartos. Well, today I'm really excited to introduce to some of you, although many of you already know these creators, uh, this is uh, Michael Gelfi from Michael Gelfi Studios and David from Describe. Hey guys, how are you? Howdy. Hi, T thanks for the invitation. Honor <laughs> to be here. Thank you, it's, Bailey. It, it's exciting to have you guys because I've been using, well, especially you, Michael. I mean, I've been using Michael Gelfi stuff since I started in the VTC oh. space, which was like four years ago. And I still use your stuff. And then and then I did a, a deal with you where I get to use your stuff in my modules. And I'm really excited about that. And frankly, I've been uh, seeing and watching Describe for probably, I don't know, the same amount of time for at least a couple of years. And I love hearing, David, like, because you guys do a lot of work with other YouTube creators and stuff like that. I'm thinking of like Colby, for example, uh, uses a bunch of the stuff that you guys do. So what I thought I'd do today, and we're also going to talk about a collaboration that you guys have launched that I find really interesting. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to introduce you guys as creators to my uh, my audience, in case those of you, uh, those listening haven't heard of you before, many of them who have, but haven't heard, really heard the story, and they probably aren't really aware of everything that you guys do. So I want to kind of unpack that a little bit. Sound like a, sound like a plan? Yeah, it's a plan. plan. All right, great. Okay, so uh, then I think what I'll start with is um, I, today's really all about audio. It's not going to be all about that, especially when I get into Describe stuff. But Michael, maybe you can kind of kick us off. What, what the heck is Michael Gelfie, Gelfie Studios? And <laughs> yeah. What do you do guys you want do? the long story or the short story? <laughs> I don't know. I'll start with the short story and then I'll, I'll see how far down the rabbit hole I'm taking. <laughs> okay. Short story. I was doing uh, music on, on YouTube for fun while, when I was studying um, uh, economics in, in Switzerland here. Um, and I was uh, playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons as a player for many years. My friends were not organizing sessions um, fast enough for me. So I thought I'm going to DM because... I don't want to wait and I speak so much. So it was a, a normal place for me to, to be the DM. But when I wanted to prepare my games, I did not find the quality I wanted for my audio. And since I was doing music, I thought sound design is not so far away from it. Maybe I could I could try something. And since I had a very big uh, library of sounds available that I could use, made a few ambiences, put it on my channel and instead I went from 7,000 subscribers in seven years with my music to 25,000 in just a few months. And I thought, okay, you know, in economics, you people need something and there's an, the offer and the demand. And I didn't know, but there was huge demand for that because, and I saw that it was actually helping people putting that on YouTube for free. And it was so fun to receive all these phenomenal uh, feedback from people all around the world that I never met we never meet probably uh, <laughs> and, and that's how uh, michael gelfi as a ambience uh, channel um create was created michael and, can i ask uh, you an industry uh colleague to colleague question about this did you see that spike happen coincide along with COVID when everybody was kind of going home taking their games home did you see uh um it grew that before pickup? It started I was, before. I, I was yes, I, I I was there before. It was cool before the COVID. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> but not not a lot of time before, maybe three, two, three years. Uh, I was just doing that for fun at first, mm -hmm. like one ambience every month, two month, and then I started working like a mad lad 
uh, Mad Men, uh, when I was also working in cybersecurity mm -hmm. after my uh, studies, uh, creating two or three ambiences per uh, per week, even up to eight ambiences per week at some point was crazy. It was going back from work, keep working, back to work, and on the weekend working as well on the ambiences. And um, then, it, yeah, it really grew by a lot. And I thought I'm starting to generate a bit of money, not much, but my ambition since I'm, I don't know, nine years old was to have my own company. It's a, it's a long-term dream I ever had because uh, I, I don't like much receiving orders. Uh, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I just started the company on the 1st of January, 2020. And nine months uh, after that, I... I employed the first person, Toshio, my editor, is doing a great job on YouTube, taking care of the upload and so on. And one month later, Philip Melvin joined me and we created Michael Gelfi Studios. And Philip joined me because, so he was doing music on his own on Patreon. Uh, he's, I was doing music as well, but he has a hundred times more talent uh, than me for music. He's, it's not comparable. When I heard this music, I was like, I'm just going to stop making music. It's just pointless. It's so much better than me. Um, and I mean, you have to, to be honest with your own skill. I don't have his skills, uh, but I have good skills for organization. Maybe it's my Swiss side. Maybe it's because I'm a bit crazy about organizing stuff. Maybe a bit of both. And together that worked really well because um, as we always say, it's a bit chaotic. Uh, he is, that's his uh, musician and, and creator side. And so together that, that works so, so well. It, an it's unstoppable an pair. Creation. I love it. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's no, there's no, how do you say that turning back? I mean, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine the company without him, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's not an employment relationship. It's a partnership really, uh, yeah. love that. And so, yeah, we had the YouTube channel, Spotify grew, uh, the website licensing Patreon as well. And, um, I think I could go on for an hour, but I think you got the, the gist of it. I think it's yeah. Well, and and you guys do you do music, but you do uh, ambient oh, yes. sounds and loops and and creates with you're using a VTT or really running any kind of tabletop where you want like the ambiance of a town behind you or a forest of lots of different varieties or caverns. I mean, it just goes on and on. But then you also have sound effects, and it's just crazy how much stuff you guys have. Uh, you're right. I actually forgot the most important, the audio in itself. I told you a story, but not what we were doing. Yes. Uh, so we are, we have the largest uh, ambiences uh, collection for um, for uh, tabletop games in the world by, by, by a larger margin. I think it's the same for music as well, about 1,500 uh, songs and sound effects. It grew um, exponentially the past month because of a project we have with David. We'll speak about it uh, later, but we have about 2,000 sound effects. Uh, and we are the official Paizo composers right now. Um, we made two albums for them. I mean, one will be out in just a few days. And we also collaborate with other artists because, as you know, uh, tabletop games are great because of all the collaboration and all the artists who, who work on, on side projects and, and even main project now. Um, and so, um, yeah, we collaborate with other composers, Ivan Dush, Dush um, ASCII, and many mm -hmm. others to to work uh, in our name uh, for for Paizo products, and it's going to be released in uh, in a few months. And of course, uh, we have Lear RPG music. Uh, German composers they have they had a small channel YouTube channel, a fantastic uh, set of skills, incredible compositions. They use many Yuri instruments as well, and they joined us officially, so they are part of NGS. Uh, they released an album for uh, Lost Minds of Van Delver. Mm -hmm. Now they're working on the, I never remember the name of this campaign. Uh, it's um, Dragon Peak, uh, Ice Peak. Dragons, Dragons of Ice Spire Peak. Yeah. There yeah. You okay. These you got all the right words. In elements, order. But, uh, <laughs> and when they're done with that, they would go on Paizo content uh, as the rest of the company and our uh, partners really love their style. Love and, it. Yeah, that's... So if people want to find you, they can find your YouTube channel. Hey, by the way, if you have it, David, feel free to bring it up. Right um, they can go to your YouTube channel. They can go to your Spotify. They can go to your Patreon, which I think you link from all of that stuff. Also, you mm -hmm. have uh, Foundry modules. Yes. And all sorts Foundry of modules. Goodies. 
Cool. On awesome. the website and on the Forge. Oh, we have a very open um, license for users, for um, streamers. It's free. You just have to credit us in, in a certain way to, to be protected by our system, our bot, that mm -hmm. will protect you from being um, striked by other people. As you know, on YouTube, you get striked by third parties who actually do not own anything and just want to steal your work. That's a very common thing on YouTube, and we protect you from that. And we also have very open conditions for other kind of projects, uh, video games and so on. And that's also a thing we're working on right now. Uh, we are working on video game um, um, productions, video game music production. It's uh, a long, long-term dream for wow. both Philip and I. <laughs> well, you guys have your hands on a lot of pies right now. That's great. I love it. Life is very exciting. Yep. Well, you've got <laughs> yeah. the volume of of work to to do a lot of really great things with it, and it, you are very creator friendly. I have to say, because I've been working with you guys for so long, it's been it's Thank been you. a pleasure. Okay, well, good. Uh, we'll see. Also, if anybody has questions for for Michael, uh, let us know in the comments. All right, David. Describe. Um, yeah, let's talk about describe, and um, I'm going to stop sharing just for a moment, so I can it it shrunk uh michael and you bailey down to tiny little thumbnails not sure why zoom does that um so I'd, I'd rather see your big smiling faces uh taking out my monitor screen so describe um i think i'll start just before describe sort of came into existence so i was uh doing something that couldn't have been further from um publishing in, in ttrpg i was a criminal lawyer and i had been a criminal lawyer for about 10 years and loved it. Um, and, you know, criminal law litigation, it actually involves a lot of, uh, there's a lot of overlap with, with playing Dungeons and Dragons and other hmm. uh, role-playing games. Because This ought to be the, interesting. <laughs> well, because there's a lot of murder and mayhem. No, no, I wasn't <laughs> thinking that. But there's, um, there's a lot of improvisation. There is a lot of storytelling. I mean, you're the stories are factual. They're like based on evidence and witness accounts and things like that, but you're still bringing to, together uh, all these, you know, di different pieces into like a coherent narrative and, uh, and you're on your feet and you're, you're thinking on your feet and that, and, um, and you're trying to be descriptive and sometimes evocative and immersive. And, um, and that's what I was doing. And I had been playing Dungeons and Dragons for maybe for, for maybe eight years. Um, uh, and this is, uh, this is around like sort of right leading up to COVID around that time. And um, I had been introduced to it by a good friend who works in um, film and television. So really creative guy and friends with other creative people. And, and I like absolutely loved it. Um, and then COVID happens all of my jury trials were suspended because you couldn't put 12 people together in a small room. So suddenly I had nothing but free time. And over the years I had like been like, I think we all do this, like kind of proselytizing, like about how wonderful D and D was and like telling all my other friends about it who hadn't tried it yet. And, um, and then they would say, and I would even gift them like the player's handbook and stuff. And they'd say like, okay, like I want to try this. And I'd say, oh no, I'm far too busy. Like my law practice, everything else. And, um, and then COVID happens, nothing but free time. And they're like, you've run out of excuses. Like let's play D and D. And so I started DMing and, um, and like, like all of us, I, you know, I started using zoom so much more for for court like there were still some virtual hearings you couldn't do a trial but like you could put a matter over or meet stuff like that and so we were all discovering zoom and you know realizing that it, you could still play D, D over zoom um and so started doing that sort of dming like much more and uh and after a few months of that it, it was during that time that the idea of describe began to crystallize in my mind and I guess I was finding that even though I had, you know, I had a master's in the philosophy of language, I had a law degree, I was like a litigator, I still like found it difficult sometimes to find the right words to bring like a rowdy tavern to life or like some temple on a mountain or, uh, you know, feeling like you're standing before a dragon or something like that. Like it's, these aren't everyday experiences uh, for better or worse. And so sometimes you can't find the words. And um, I thought, you know, 
And then I loved, like I was running uh, an adventure module and I did love the fact that it contained box text, like in these key key settings or, or encounters or something, there would be like two or three, you know, really nicely pithy sentences that would set the stage and like kick them off. And I really like appreciated that. And uh, so, yeah, I thought, well, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a resource of box text, but it was like not tied to a specific adventure module. It was more generic. And by generic, I don't mean like boring. I just mean more compatible with like any sort of trope fantasy setting or scenario. Um, and I, I, I looked for something like that. didn't really find anything um, and thought, oh, like I, I might have a sort of somewhat original idea and which doesn't happen all the time. And uh, long story short, I, I founded Describe with my brother-in-law, very entrepreneurial, also very creative, one of my players, probably the most enthusiastic person I've ever met. So we decide to start this publishing company. We know the sort of pain point that we want to um, try to solve. And uh, so we thought, okay, well, we need, we need writers. Like I can write, but I'm not, you know, there are better writers out there. Um, I can write a legal brief really well, but uh, that's not what we're doing. Um, so I um, basically got a couple of um, adventure modules, looked through the, like published uh, by Wizards of the Coast. I looked at the credits pages and I went on like a letter writing campaign. Um, and I basically reached out, cold called, if you will, a bunch of like fantastic, um, really experienced writers and editors. and. Most, you know, obviously didn't respond or some responded and said like they weren't interested or they were busy or whatever, but a couple did reply and they loved the concept. And, um, and so they started writing for Describe and through them, we were introduced to a couple more writers as well and sort of grew a grew team of, of writers and editors that way. And, you know, once I started receiving like the, their, their writing, like the, the drafts and stuff, I was like, just blown away like it was so good and uh you know when like you read something uh maybe it's like a novel and it's so good that you have to like kind of stop and 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 just like absorb it and pause and then continue it, oh, yeah. it was like that sometimes so i i felt at that point more assured that like we were on to something and then we just went like we just started trying to describe as much as we could places and initially but then like monsters and spells and um, magic items and everything that you know you can guess the sorts of things that we we, we got yeah, and to. it's prolific i mean i've seen you guys really cover everything now it's incredible we do yeah, yeah. we do and we it's uh i mean we've published over fourteen thousand. um we call them scenes yeah, and they're all you know three four sentences typically um you know the brevity is really important because like players you know they want the dm to set the scene they want the immersion theater of the mind but then they don't want a monologue every time they want like they get excited they want to jump into the scene they want to interact with it or attack something or something like that so they want the dm to shut up once they've like kind of you know checked that box and it, and that's actually one of the challenges. It's 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 not just you know really flowery, colorful writing, but it's like a really efficient, succinct writing as well. And and that can be difficult. And so you know the 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 goal really is to it's, there's sort of two 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 things that describe is offering with the text side. It's the it's the immersion, like the the evocative writing. But it's also the, it cuts down on prep, like DMs are already prepping, like, and every DM is different and some can just wing it. They don't prep at all. And that's amazing. Uh, and I'm not taking anything away from them, but like for many DMs, it's like four hours or of prep for a session or, or sometimes even more. And, um, if you have one less thing that you need to do, that's great. You can just save that time to make a sandwich before your session or something like that, or just focus that prep on some other thing, which is probably what most DMs do. So that's, that's how D, uh, Describe started. And uh, it was publishing this generic box text. 
And over time, we moved into maps as well, uh, so battle maps. And um, we collaborated with like all the you know fantastic battle map makers that are out there, like um, Chepaku and Lost Acumen and Lone Mapper and so many others. And we we publish their maps, but we write box text for all of the rooms or air, you know areas of the map. And um, and what I'll do is I'll share my screen and I'll give you an example of one of those just so you see it. So, David, I've got at there's... least six ideas on some module developers that I know in the Foundry world that I could inter- I could see integrating Describe into other right classes. On. I can't help myself. I I I, <laughs> I love that. Um, so. This is, so I'll just start at the homepage and you, you can all see it clearly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, great. So this is the homepage of Describe. Um, this is, uh, so we do scenes, audio and maps. We'll get to audio um, shortly. Um, so here are all the maps we've published. There are, at this point, I think between 75 or 80. Um, although many of them, almost all of them have like two or three variants. Um, sure. So, so yeah. You know how it goes, Bailey. This is the uh, what we call the cartographer's collection, and uh, so it lists you know all the maps. And uh, this is one particular map. This is a map by Lone Mapper called Giant Elk Tavern. And so I'm going to launch it. And so this is what I'm talking about with like the you know describing the um, the different areas uh, or different rooms. We write sometimes just a few sentences, sometimes more. The make the writer who did this uh, map, Megan Garner. She's an incredible writer, and she was so inspired by the map because it's such a good map that she created like I wouldn't call it a you know quest or anything like that, but like just lots of little threads that give a DM like a DM could just totally disregard them and you know do their own use the map and the and the descriptive text for their own purposes but lots of little hooks and threads that they can grab onto and sort of repurpose and, and use for their own, uh, the own, their story or adventure that they're telling. And uh, so, yeah, you, you can kind of zoom in and out, pan around, mouse over and, and get all the text. There's also uh, this panel here on the right. And if I click on these things, it'll sort of jump to it. And then all the variants. And what's the idea here, David? Does this work with VTTs or how does how does one then does. do yeah, that? Yeah. I'm glad you asked. So on the map page, um, the page where we launched this from, there are there's, you know, the, the you can download the map files, they're PNGs or JPEGs, and you can import it wherever you want. But um, Describe has its own foundry module um, and almost all or almost all of our content gets synced to it. It would depend on your subscription level, uh, but that includes maps and it includes the text that we've placed around the map. Cool. So we, you know, we prep them and you know all about this, like with the with light walls and lighting, and and then we uh, we put journal entries all around for the text so that you can, you know, the DM can just open it up, read it. It's right there. They don't need to go fishing for it. And we and as we'll get to in a moment. The module also works with Opus, like with our audio. Um, so you can, it's super cool. You can browse all of our, uh, and use a little search engine within the module to to search all 4,700 audio tracks that we've published Come so on. far. And it's hundreds and hundreds more every month. Like it's growing so quickly, as wow. Michael was saying. Um, you can search super fast. And drag and drop what you like the 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 ambience. Let's say it's a let's say the map has a waterfall on it. We have like an ambience of a waterfall, like that sound. You would you know find it, drag it right onto the spot that uh, where the waterfall is depicted on the map. And now you've got the native foundry proximity fading. So as the actors get closer, they're hearing it. Um, and you can also drag. Uh, sorry, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you can drag audio also into the right sidebar to use Foundry's native uh, audio player. So yeah, that's how we, uh, to answer your question, that's how um, our users might use uh, one of these maps. Cool. Love it. Yeah. yeah. We're um, going to have to do a collab with you guys. I don't think I have any Describe on my maps today, and we're going to have to resolve that. Agreed. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So um, that was like, 
we launched in January 2021, um, you know, I was talking about publishing all the text and the thing just totally took off like people I, and it, a lot of it was like dumb luck, right? Like it was just the timing because mm -hmm. as we've alluded to the, the industry, like the game, it went through this crazy renaissance during COVID. It was a way for people to socialize um, and and like connect with each other and play and have fun. And there yeah. was like the escapism was great because we were in this like unprecedented global pandemic, which sucked. And uh, so the you know all these new players and new DMs are 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 entering the uh, the market, so to speak. Yeah, and, and it's all going digital and exactly the demand for digital assets and audio and everything else just took off. And so we were this very small publisher riding this rising tide. And there was this whole cottage industry that sprung up during that time. And we were just one of many publishers that were riding that, that wave, so to speak. And, um, and that's what happened. And then in, I think it was in 2022, we wanted to work with another um, audio provider and it was a simple idea. It was kind of like Michael shaking his head for a good reason. And we just wanted to um, collaborate in a similar way as we do with maps. We wanted to write text for their ambient audio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was like a neat idea. And we were, um, well, anyway, it kind of didn't, it didn't really work out. And we were disappointed because we wanted to do it like on a creative level, I thought it would be really yeah. cool. So I, um, I was sort of uh, what's like the word like I was, I was kind of motivated by that disappointment, mm, and yeah. I think I reached out to um, to Che from Che Paku, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Who composes the best um, ambient audio?" And he was like, "Michael Gelfi," and I had probably heard his name already, but you know, Che knows what he's talking about. So sure. I uh, reached out to Michael and I like pitched the idea and we were off to the races. Like Michael loved it and um, we started working on it and we, and it was, it's been an interesting sort of rocky road. Like we, we wanted to get it out the door as quickly as possible. We are big believers in the, this like, it's, I hate like business term, business jargon, because like I, I don't come from a business background, but uh, MVP, minimal viable product, right? But yeah. it's a great idea because you you don't if you can't wait forever for perfection. Like right. you'll uh, the business you'll over engineer will, it, you'll build the wrong yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. Waste a lot of time. All right. So we had this um, we had this really simple favoriting tool already that would allow users to like save or favorite um, scenes that they really liked, and we kind of like we kind of hacked audio into it so that you could piece together like a kind of like an, an ambient playlist mm -hmm. um, that, that was connected to some text and it worked well enough. And we, and we were able to, um, it even had streaming. So you could send uh, your players like an invite link and they could listen to what you were playing, but nothing, it, it worked, but it didn't work well. And we obviously wanted it to work well, but as soon as we got it out the door, we started working on, um, what we now call Opus, which was like built totally from scratch, from the ground up using Angular and it really like, yeah, purpose built. Opus is, so what is Opus? Opus is, it's a web app. It's a modern web app. It runs in your browser, but it runs much more like, uh, and I'm going to pull it up in a second. It, you know, runs much more like a standalone application. Um, you launch it from the homepage, um, but there's no scrolling or anything like that. It just sort of takes up the window. And it's, it's just a great way to either play TTRPG audio, like on the fly, you know, multiple ambiences, a music track, stuff like that, sound effects, or even better to prepare what we call a collection in advance of a session mm -hmm. and maybe build out like a setting that, you know, your players are going to explore or, um, you know, build out all the things that you think they're going to do or go to you know, during the upcoming session and then kind of like DJ the audio and uh, I'll, I'll pull it up now. I love it. So, uh, I mean, you guys are really together. I mean, this for you, especially David going all in on, on audio, like that's such a huge part of any game, any map. Like I, I can't run a game without good audio, not only 
uh, the music, but the ambience and all that stuff. So this is like a pretty big deal. And we've got both of you guys coming together on this. And this has been, you've been working on this for some time. We have, yeah. And I, and I think like you hit the nail on the head. I think that Describe, one of its core, you know, I was talking about immersion and like cutting down prep. And I, I, I think that, you know, language, and I certainly know this as like a, a lawyer. Um, and I, I didn't mention like I, I had to, uh, so as COVID was sort of going out, like things were getting better, my trials started resuming and I was doing like homicide trials and stuff, serious stuff. And, and Describe was growing like crazy. And, uh, and my wife was pregnant and I was like, I can only do two of these three things. Like I cannot, something has to, to, to give. And so ultimately I decided to close my law practice. And, uh, so Talk I'm like, all in. yeah, yeah. So describe like language, you know, the right turn of phrase or something like that. Like it, you know, it, it, it can, it's an efficient way to create that theater of the mind experience. Like we all know that audio is the same in some ways audio is even more efficient because what's cool about audio is like if you hear the drip 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 of like water coming down like trickling down a stalagmite or something and like that kind of hollow sound of like wind moving through a passage your brain will tell you you are in a wet cavern deep underground without you consciously thinking having that thought like before like if you just hear that and the dm hasn't even started into the box text to tell the players where they are you'll feel like the humidity and the wetness and the cold yeah. stone and like your brain will just do that totally subconsciously yeah so super immersive super efficient like from a from a world building um you know immersion um pr perspective and then when you can marry those two things up like great description and immersive audio then it you know that's that's even better right that's really special and that creates like those memorable um experiences as a as a player and that was like the crux of the of the idea like to collaborate with with michael and why it made sense it was it was sort of it was consistent with describes mission um yeah okay so what we're seeing here is the opus homepage, and um so we've got there there are like three file types in opus and by far the most important one is collections and that's where you would pre uh, prepare um ambience uh sound effects and music uh, but there are also music playlists and sound effects boards there are your own files like as a user you can create a collection call it whatever you want add, add uh, content to it and we'll see what that looks like in a second um but the cool thing is you can also browse what are called featured files and community files um so for example if i click on um, featured collections these are collections that describe has published that are available to any opus user so we, for example, you know, we put together a collection for Caverns of Thracia, which is a classic uh, module, um, Curse of Strahd, Lost Mine of Phandelver, and a bunch of others. And we've put a ton of time into them. Like they're, you know, we've, we've looked very closely at the module and gone through it piece by piece and like found the right um, ambience or sound effect for, for each of them. And you'll see one or two in, in a moment. Um, and as a user, you can, you don't necessarily if you're especially if you're running one of those modules you don't need to start from scratch and build your own you can just grab the, one of these and play it directly or even copy it to your own library mm. and then make changes to it like add to it um edit it and so forth and then the same concept for community files so uh I'll click and there's like thousands of them um so right now if i type in uh lmop i get you know, this is like 12 or so um, collections wow. for, for this one module that have been created by the community. Now, if you create a, um, a collection, your own collection, by default, it's private, but you can make it public. And then if you've made it public, other users can find it, as I've just demonstrated. So, um, but before I get to collections, I want to show you Rome. So, this is more like if you just want to browse the entire library 
um, really explore it, or you don't like to prep in advance, you just sort of freestyle it, um, you would potentially use Roam. And uh, so I'm going to, there, there are, um, these things on the left are tags. We, we meticulously tag every piece of audio, uh, scenes too. So one of the editors sits down and says like, okay, you know, there's an ambience, like, is it a castle? Is it a forest? Is it a, um, you know, is there an animal in it? Is there a, uh, is it creepy, right? Like what's the vibe? Um, is it Druid related and on and on. There's like hundreds of tags and you can use these to really quickly drill down to what you're looking for. So if I apply this castle tag, now every single result has the castle tag. It's somehow related nice. to castles. Um, I can further drill down by type. So I could say I'm only interested in ambiences mm. and castles like already fantasy genre, but I could say I want it, you know, just the fantasy genre, not like some sci-fi castle or something like that. So in a couple of clicks, I've now got super relevant results and I can, so I've got a creepy ice fortress right there. And you can see the other tags that we've applied to it. Um, Arctic, foreboding, loneliness and wind. And if I click on it, um, it starts playing. Before we started working to together, I realized I was a bad client of myself in a way that I we created so many sounds that I even could not use all the sounds we made. And I thought we, we need to go past that point because it's going to be worse and worse and worse. Uh, I, I mainly play around the table, so I don't use much um, Foundry. Foundry is my favorite VTT. Uh, when I play remotely, I use it. But when I'm around the table with my friends and pizza, uh, generally, I just have uh, a folder with the, the, the audio in it. I mean, I had until we had described an opus. Uh, but before that, it was just a mess to use the sound effects, the music, and and, and layering everything. And, you know, it's uh, funny. I have yeah. the same. So I have so much content mm -hmm. that finding it has historically been the hardest thing. So I, I literally yeah. had to acquire a module. This year yeah. has to be one of my favorite modules. <laughs> just to put a container around all of my stuff and make it findable. So it's like once you've been doing this for a few years, yeah, uh, it is all about the organization of the content. Yes, it's a yeah. really hard problem to solve, especially when you're dealing with VTTs and they've got different like uh, constraints and stuff like that. I like that you guys have put this on its own web app. It can exist independent of what I'm doing. I'm sure yeah. at some point in the future you might have APIs and other things that are working in. Oh, but yes. as a as an MVP, this is pretty pretty good all on its own. Yeah, yeah. the um, the API is is definitely on a roadmap because we think that there are sort of boundless possibilities and we we want to make it easier to work with um yeah absolutely um okay so, so so we've now browsed we're able to like look up stuff really quickly yeah are you gonna walk uh, me through how to then like add that or sorry I, yeah you you take me through it how, how do we go through this you bet so um so this is rome and uh we're gonna now go back to the opus homepage. And we're going to launch um, a collection. And this is a collection based on uh, Lost Mine of Fandelver. So I'm going to launch it. And here it is. Now, the, um, the building blocks of a collection are something we call blocks. There are these things here. And um, you can have one or two or 100. And they are organized here in this outline on the left. And you can nest one block within another. Um, so, you know, you keep things all nice, nicely organized. You can have like the, the room within the building, within the village, within the region, um, if you want. And you can use this outline to, to jump around. Uh, you can add descriptive text if you want. So you could add your box text right here and, you know, have that sort of ready uh, to, to read aloud. You can even grab a hyperlink, uh, like if you wanted to, if you're using some other um, note taking app or something like that, you could leave a, an so anchored cool. link to that specific block and it would like open up the collection right to that point. Nice. Um, and the idea is to have all of the, um, all of the ambient sound effects and music that is tied to a specific location or maybe a specific event 
in one place. So you're like, you're not fishing for it, right? You're not like the way we were in Rome, typing in keywords and finding things and stuff like it kind of assumes that you've done all of that in advance. And, uh, and it's easy to do. So like if I wanted to add um, another sound effect to this block, I would click on this plus button. It knows just to search the sound effects. Mm -hmm. And I could say, I don't know, uh, laser. Let's give the goblins a laser cannon. That wouldn't, that would be difficult if you're a level one adventurer on, on the high road, but, but there we go. We've now got a laser cannon uh, in the mix. And to play these things, you just click play and turn them on. You can layer as many ambiences as you want and you can trigger the sound effects. So you can um, pop open the footer and you can play with the mix. So you can adjust the, the volume um, that you're hearing the, the game, so to speak, but also like the mix between ambience, music and sound effects. You can adjust those. Um, so maybe you want the music like more in the foreground and why don't I turn some music on? Um, you can you know have the music more in the foreground or more in the background, something like that. Uh, and it's it's we make it super easy to do. So now oh we've got we run into uh, the the goblin ambush, and I, I assume you can hear the goblins. It's super quiet for me, but uh, we can yeah. Right on, and they've got a laser cannon, unfortunately, um, and we would probably switch to the goblin ambush music that is like a little more sort of excitable. And, um, you know, with a few clicks and some, some description of what's going on, like you can really cr create this immersive experience David, of the, of the I goblin am, ambush. I am in the goblin ambush. I can feel it. It's visceral. Right. I'm watching my back. This is great. <laughs> right on. Um, music is automatically cross-faded, ambience is faded in and out. Like we do those things to try to make it more like organic and, and smooth that and sort so of thing. I don't have to manage things as the GM. It's just more of like, how do you just make audio sort of seamless for me, right? Exactly. You can quickly stop all audio or maybe all music that's playing or all ambience and, um, or just sort of move on to the next setting. And, you know, you would maybe turn off this ambience uh, when the fight ends and it should just sort of fade out. And then we arrive at Fandolin, and then maybe move into the marketplace and turn this off and maybe turn off the windy countryside and, and you, you can turn them off in the in the footer directly as well that's right yeah you can just go right into the footer so even if i was somewhere else like down here i'm still going to see whatever's playing you know even if it's up at the top, back at the top of the document and i'm going to uh Maybe I'll play something else. I'll stop the, the Goblin Ambush music. Let's play this Liberated Frontier Village theme. And you can see how like if you've, if we've put in the prep work or you've put in the prep work, it's something that you could do as, you know, a scene sort of as you transition from one scene to the next and then minimize it or put it on your second monitor, go back to whatever VTT you're using or confer with your notes. I know Michael, like when he uses Opus, he just takes all of his notes, puts them in here. You don't need to use it that way, but some people do. <laughs> We've added rich text editing. Um, it was something we did more recently. So you highlight a sentence or a word or something like that, and you can like make it bold, underline it, you know, simple stuff like that. You can even add uh, links and even images uh, if you have a url for the image it'll insert it right here wow. um and we're just getting started as i mentioned we're still in beta and i i you know one of the things that i'll show you one more feature sort of within opus and then i want to talk a little bit about where we want to take it um some of the features that are that we're going to be working on over the next few weeks so um this is a really cool feature and it's it's going to be it's going to be improved um but the, the idea here is we've got this right sidebar um, and there's uh, music, sound effects and players. So we'll, we'll start with music. You might have a piece of music, like a, a layout motif that is recurring, like you use it whenever the players are exploring. It's not tied to a block. It's not tied to a specific location, right? Sure, yeah. So if you have a piece of music like that, um, you would add it to the right sidebar here, to this music cue. 
And that way, no matter what, where the players are, it's close at hand. Like you can just hit play, it'll start playing it. Um, and in fact, you can do that with not just one music track, but an entire music playlist. Mm. So I was talking about those two other file types earlier, music playlists and sound effects boards. You can create your own, you can grab, like Michael has put, um, I don't know, 50 or 60 uh, wonderful music playlists that he's curated. <laughs> 80 in, or 90 actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, they're, and you can see them here. So like exploration music, exploring the deep, farewell music, gothic dungeon, hellscape, like on and on. Wow. Mm -hmm. These are curated, curated playlists. So you don't need to spend time like, you know, putting that together yourself, maybe in the middle of a session, you can be like, okay, they are, uh, they are in a gothic dungeon now, or they are traveling in awe, like it's some awe inspiring place. That's where they're traveling. You can toggle that playlist on from within this collection. And it just adds all the tracks from that music playlist to the queue. And then you can remove it and it'll revert back to the default queue. I'll do that one more time. So let's say it's combat, turn that on. That's a huge music playlist. I mean, that's going to keep you going for a long time and it'll loop at the end, like it'll restart yeah. at the, and, um, and then just start playing it. And that way you can as the DM kind of just focus on what's unfolding again, not worry so much about the audio. You just turn that playlist on, start it and go back to, you know, running the game. Um, and then when it's, when it's done, as I said, you know, you can just revert back to the, uh, the default queue or some other playlist. What we're, what we're going to do with this feature is right now it just displays every music playlist that you've created or that's featured and that was okay at the start, but then Michael went ahead and like put together so many, too many that you're now spending time browsing music playlists. Like there's a lot of them. Um, so what we're going to do is create like a, uh, a bit more of like a browser that so, so none would be loaded at this initially and you would open up like a little modal and then only add those that you think might be relevant, you know, maybe down in you know later in the session or something like that you could add them in and that's all that you would see on your list and you could you know remove some add some more whenever you want right. and have more of like a short list of music playlists and then the exact same idea for sound effects so you you're you know the wizard in the party they cast fireball wherever they go it doesn't matter what room they're in what location you would add that here um and it's always ready to be played like some of these sound effects here and and while we haven't done it yet, we will publish featured sound effects boards. So, you know, maybe all of the uh, sound effects, uh, all the spell sound effects that a wizard might cast or something like that. And actually that brings us perfectly to something that we've been working on, especially Michael's been working on for the past few months. So we developed a new feature for the Foundry module. It's really cool. Uh, I've been calling it auto SFX. And we basically mapped, we did two things. We, I told Michael he had to create a sound effect for every single spell in 5e, which was like hundreds and hundreds. Easy, easy. easy. And so he just- Yeah, 600, something like that. <laughs> worked crazy hours over the past few months and did that. And they're, they're phenomenal. Like they, they're, they, they sound terrific. Um, and while he was doing that, we were, we were developing this new feature and we, we basically mapped every spell and weapon attack and monster death in the 5e game system in Foundry to a unique sound effect. And so if you, if you use, if you turn this feature on and you're using the describe module and you cast a spell or, um, you, you know, you use a weapon attack, it will just automatically without any intervention play the relevant sound effect for everyone to hear, like all the players, the DM, everyone gets to hear it. It's really cool. Like the, mo the you know, you watch the dragon die and then all of a sudden everyone hears this like epic groan of this like dragon's last breath um, as it collapses. And it really helps like bring home those moments, right? Um, big so sound of explosion and yeah. Technical question. Are you using like sequencer or some kind of module to facilitate that? Or are you doing all of the automation within the describe module? It's happening. There's no dependency. Uh, it's happening within the, the describe uh, wow, module. That's impressive. 
And uh, and any anything beyond that, technically, I wouldn't be able to answer. That's not we've we've already talked about my uh, antecedents, but um, I would have to ask the developer. But uh, he's he's super. Um, he he knows Foundry. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and and it's very impressive what he's accomplished. All those sound effects that make the auto SFX feature work, they also are in Opus. Like we can we can find them, uh, you know, browsing this way or in Rome, they're all there. You could add them to the right and, uh, and make use of them. And that kind of brings me to another feature that we're really excited to, to start working on. I don't think it'll be too difficult. And that is player triggered sound effects. So we're used to like through Opus and other sort of competitors, just assuming that the only audio that gets played is played by the DM. But the DM like already has, they're juggling so many balls. Like there's, it's, uh, you know, a lot is asked of the DMs and we thought, well, in many cases, like the, especially sound effects, they're, they're caused by something that the player is doing, or at least the players like knows it's happening. So, um, you know, why not let the players contribute to the, the audio soundscape, so to speak. Um, when the wizard casts fireball, why is the DM the one that hit, hits that like sound pad for the fireball? Um, the, the, the player can just do that. The wizard should be able to do that and everyone would hear it. And um, that's one of the reasons like we, we developed Opus from scratch so that we could kind of build in that type of capability um, and uh, so that it could be developed down the road. Um, so player fired sound effects, I think will be amazing. I, I think, I think we'll also need to roll out like a, uh, a mute, um, feature because people will be mashing the fart button and the burp button and stuff a lot too, right. but it, I think it'll be great. Um, and I think players will really enjoy like contributing, as I said, and playing all their spell sound effects, you know, weapon we attacks and everything. We see that players really like to own their own, um, yeah. player expression right in a game. That's and right. so that's why you see like uh, when players use, like if you give them the ability to create their own animations, they like having their acts animated when they attack something, they like the spells that they like to mm -hmm. use animated. Um, you know, you have hero forge where players will go in and design their own characters because they have so much owner. I mean, think about how many months you're invested in, in these characters, right? So absolutely, it's great that you're giving them that tool. I, I know they'll love it and they will probably spam the fart button. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've got a live so, game going on right now. And I know on, on our channel called uh, with the familiars, I know for a fact, there's a couple of players, chaos monkeys in that game that, are, that would use something like that. And you know, who that's I'm exciting talking to about. hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now I, 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 I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, we're so proud of Opus that we, and we think it's such a great tool that we want as many people to be able to try it as possible. And so we are working with people like you, Bailey, to not just spread awareness, but spread the opportunity to give it a try. And I believe we gave you a code that your um, amazing listeners and viewers can use to try Opus for free, to try all of Describe for free for, I think it's 30 days. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, right. you guys, I have an affiliate link. I'll put it in the video description. So the first affiliate link I've ever done and uh, really yeah and maybe it'll be the last one because <laughs> i don't do affiliate stuff because you know normally i just i just talk about like stuff i like but i mean you guys are two great uh creators that i've known for quite some time and i really believe in giving dms the the control over their their audio experience and i haven't seen anything like this yet so yeah if uh if everybody watching anybody watching wants to try it out you can go to, uh, I think it's describe.com slash bailiwiki. Should be easy enough to remember, mm -hmm. describe.com slash bailiwiki. And I think if they sign up from there, they'll just let you guys know that. Um, they need to plug in the Bailey, the code. So oh, at checkout. Good to know. Type in bailiwiki into the little code field. And that's what's going to unlock the 30-day the free trial on any subscription. And yeah, can't wait to, to sort of hear from your your amazing community um, what they think of it and because we're still you know we we're still in beta and we we want to make the best tool ever um, we love feedback even when it's like really constructive or critical because it just makes the tool better is a lot of the best ideas that we oh yeah have had they they they've not been our own they've they've come from uh 
our amazing community, like in our Discord server or, the or whatever. The collective brain is way, yeah. is way more powerful than the three of us could ever come up it with. It sure is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. David and Michael, thanks for all the good work that you guys have done in general. It's been fun to grow up together uh, over the last few years. I mean, I think, you know, Michael, you've been at it for a while, but David and I both kind of started with COVID sort of accidentally. And and <laughs> I've just seen the this, um, you know, this whole industry transform and it's been fun to, to do it together and come up with interesting ideas and kind of promote each other's work and stuff like that. But I mean, just as far as like creating things that help GMs, that's, that's what my channel's about teaching GMs who like to tinker, uh, how to tinker a little bit less and, and execute more kind of thing. Um, so really appreciate you guys' work. Yeah, likewise. And Bailey, thank you for all of your contribution to the community. It's you, you're prolific and, original i mean like the modular assets and the maps and everything it's amazing and i think it's unrivaled so um you know it's it's been humbling it's been an honor to to be chatting with you about um these subjects thank you yeah thank you uh, bailey uh it's always a pleasure to uh send you a few tracks your way for your project uh, remember that we worked uh with uh, philip on a few on a few tracks and the feedback from your community has always been really, really positive. You, you've you built um, a good community of friendly people. I mean, that's quite the, that's quite normal in TTRPG. I feel like everyone is really nice, but uh, <laughs> your community really is, yes. And thanks for the invitation. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. Well, thanks, guys, for making the time. Thanks for walking us through Opus, everything else that you're doing in the community today. Um, I'll link, like I said, to, uh, to Opus and, and other things that the community might find helpful in the description. In the meantime, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. And okay. we'll, see you, uh, we'll see you online, yeah? So long. Yeah. See you guys. Okay.